I, I thank, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to serve you with communion. That's an honor. that I have used is John 10.10 10, because I want us to remember that although the word is delivered, the enemy is coming right there to try to steal it, to try to take it from us. So I just want to go over that. For the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy has come in and stolen from us without even real without us even realizing in many cases. We've learned just to go with the flow of his evil tactics without even an attempt to fight back or to receive what God has promised. In most cases, the body of Christ has never been exposed to the promises of God. Thank God for this church, for this church called that church, mm -hmm. where we learn the promises, where we go from milk to meat. That is why the evil one is able to steal from humans, because we don't know our rights. We don't know the promises. We don't know the giftings of God. He's been given Unknowing, unknowing excess, access to finances, quality of life, energy, happiness, joy, wisdom, godly knowledge, even our very own health. Lies upon lies, we've been given our lives over without a fight. But Jesus says that he has come to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. So our first scripture is going to be Isaiah chapter 61, 1 through 3. And I'm reading the Amplified, but it's not the Amplified classic. It's the exaltation of the afflicted. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. This is Jesus. Prophetically, it's Jesus to proclaim release from confinement and the condemnation to the physical and spiritual captives and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them in turmoil to give them a turmoil instead of dust on their heads, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment expressive of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. So they will be called the trees of righteousness, strong and magnificent, distinguished 
and for integrity, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. God wants to take all of our mourning, our sorrow, our brokenness, and he's going to make us strong again. There's times in every single one of our lives where, you know, we've been brokenhearted, where we have grieved, where we have had loss. It could be even a job, it doesn't have to be, or a loss of a person. There's so many areas that cause broken hearts, grieving, and great loss. And what the Lord has come to tell us is that he is here to heal that. He is going to heal that, and all we have to do is just believe, right? Right. Right? Yep. This, I mean, the word is here to build faith. Okay, our next, our next uh, scripture is Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and this is the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed by tragedy. Again, that's what Jesus was sent for, is to is to do that, to take care of us, to heal us. He hasn't left us here to our own devices, to be destroyed in any way, shape, or form by the enemy and those things that the enemy wants to do to us. I'm not used to using the iPad. Okay, our next, our next scripture is Psalm 147.3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrows. Again, here he is throughout the word both Old and New Testament. And a lot of uh, the Old Testament is prophetic messages through David. He's proclaiming what Jesus is going to do when he arrives on the scene. The Good News version of 147.3, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those that are broken in spirit. Oh, my word. Oh my word, how precious is that. He loves us so much. And, you know, a lot of what's happened is the enemy coming in to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus wants us to come to him. Come to him that our broken hearts, our grief, our loss, that he can take all that. Remember, in communion, he's acquainted with all of that. He has first-hand knowledge. So with having first not just, I mean, yourself. When you've been exposed to something or suffered through so something, isn't it so much easier to help your fellow man? Amen. To say, I've been there. I've been there. I understand. I'm here for you. That's our Lord. Our next scripture is Psalm 30, 
verses 11 and 12. You have turned my morning into dancing for me. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my soul may sing praise to you and to not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forevermore. How precious, how wonderful is our loving, loving God. Our next scripture, I know I'm using a lot of scripture today, but I want us to understand that he's there for us, that he's there to heal us. And this is the beginning process. We need this. We need this desperately. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it a little further as I go a little further. Our next scripture is Isaiah 51, 11. So the redeemed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion. Everlasting joy will be on their heads. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. We need to claim these scriptures. If you're going through anything, you need to claim these scriptures and know you are not downtrodden. You are God's children. He wants the very best for you. And he wants you to seek him in his word to find out, to find out just what all, all is yours that you no longer have to suffer. When, um, when our hearts are broken, when grief comes upon us, when loss of any kind happens, we need healing in our souls. We need restoration. If these areas are left, never addressed, it's difficult to experience all that God has for us. When these soulish areas are not healed, it can open the door to physical sickness and disease. And that is why we want to deal with those emotional hurts so that it doesn't go to the next step. Like anger, you know, anger undealt with winds up with bitterness. Uh, anger and unforgiveness winds up with bitterness. And then, you know, which is a, a downward spiral. So we don't want that to happen. So we don't want that to happen as far as these emotional hurts to be gone, to go on so long that now it causes physical harm to our bodies. Okay. Often the Psalms of David are prophetic messages about the coming of Jesus, who is and what he was going to do when he arrived. So um, I would love to see people healed, delivered from some of this, and I'm going to take us through a prayer. Excuse me. I would like you to repeat this. We're going to do a prayer and then we're going to do a declaration, okay? So if you would repeat after me. Father, I'm in pain. I'm in pain. And I'm experiencing grief at my losses. In this pain, I invite you to be the God of all comfort. Strengthen me. Draw near to me. And give, me hope. and give me hope. Help me walk through this grief. Help me walk through this grief. Heal me. Heal me. 
and in your time, turn it around and fill me with your eternal joy and hope. I break the power of any ungodly grief and loss and command trauma and all its effects to go in Jesus' name, never to return. Jesus, heal every area of my life that has been affected negatively. Grief and loss will never have power over me. Sorrow and sighing, flee away. And may everlasting joy and gladness overtake me. God, everything is in your capable hands. I ask for opportunities to comfort others with the comfort I'm receiving from the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And yeah, hopefully you're saying these from your heart. So um, I'm going to take us through another declaration, so to speak, and just make sure you're saying these things from your heart. We, I saw a young man on Monday, and I, I, I took the group through some prayers and declarations, and I could see him closed his eyes and it was really from his heart and God hit him hard Amen. with deliverance I've never seen such joy in my entire life from this young man Amen. so that, that did my heart good it gave me joy you know, to see that happen alright so if you would repeat after me again and please say this from your heart Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the trauma caused by this grief and loss. I command it to go in Jesus' name, never to return. I curse the spirit of trauma and the spirit of grief and I break their power over me. In Jesus' name. I declare that I trust your sovereign decision. I declare that I trust your sovereign decision. When to give and when to take life. I place my life and the life of everyone I care about in your hands. I pray peace and joy into my heart and I, and I take for myself your promise. You have turned for me my morning into dancing. And sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Thank you, Jesus. If God has touched you, please let this ministry know. And Father, I just know that as these emotional things are dealt with, that this is going to provide protection from illnesses, physical illnesses being manifested in bodies. So don't take lightly um, 
these situations that you're go that you may be going through or have gone through or that you can help someone else through. If you need further help, please contact this ministry and uh, you know we'll be glad to to minister in any way and help you in any way that we can. We love you. Jesus loves you. Amen. 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 God bless each and every one of you.